Hi there, uh, my name's Paul. I'm doing this video to show you how to install factory cruise control in a BL Mazda, which runs from 2009 to 2013. There's an excellent video already on YouTube uh, done by M. Corving that talks about doing it in a BK Mazda, which is the model before this. And I've noticed a lot of comments under that video saying, hey man, how do you do this on a BL? And as I've discovered, the reason no one else has done the video is it's actually quite difficult to do. But I have worked it out and I want to show you. There's plenty of videos to talk you through the first two parts, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But just to very briefly say, you're going to go from an old steering wheel that has one control set to a new steering wheel that has four control sets. So it's got the uh, info there, it's got the stereo controls there, and it's got two for cruise control. So you're either going to need a complete new steering wheel or you can just take the controls out of um, a wrecked car or, a, or if you just buy the parts and put them into your steering wheel. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is the brake switch. This is the brake switch out of my uh, non-cruise control car and you'll notice that down the bottom it only has two pins. It's got a pin in position one and a pin in position four. There's nothing in positions two and three. Now the one that I've taken out of my wrecked car and put into this one has four pins. One, two, three, four. So this one would not work with cruise control. This is the old one that was originally in this car. Now I've also seen a lot of comments on the internet um, saying, hey man, I've got a cable accelerator. Why is not working? I just wanted to show you what a uh, fly-by-wire accelerator looks like so that you can understand how to identify whether you've got a fly-by-wire or cable. This is fly-by-wire, so that there is electronics, and as you press your foot on the accelerator, you're moving on a variable, um, a variable resistor there, which is sending an electrical signal down these wires to the central computer to tell you what position the throttle is in. So this is fly-by-wire. This is not the old school way of doing it with a high tensile cable. If you've got a high tensile cable, this system will not work because that is a mechanical system and this is an electronic system and you need to do it electronically. So, based on what I've seen in that M Corving video, a lot of you got to the step where this car is right now. So, you've got the new steering wheel installed, you've got the new brake sensor installed. But when you turn your car on and you press cruise on, you do not see the cruise light on. So I'm pressing cruise on now and absolutely nothing has happened. I'm pretty sure a lot of you people out there in internet land, this is where you got to. So I'm now going to show you how to get past that to the next step. Now, I'm going to quickly do it with everything working and then in the next series of videos after this I'm going to do it slowly step by step. So very quickly this is the ODB Link EX ODBC uh, 2 connector the ODB 2 connector for uh, the Forescan program. So I've bought that on my laptop I've got the Forescan program installed uh, where's my mouse gone? I've got the Forescan program installed and I've got the extended license installed and I'm going to show you later how to do that. So I'm going to take the ODB2 connector, I'm going to plug it into the port in the car which is uh, down here on a, uh, so it's down there. I'm going to open up my Forescan program and I'm going to I've, uh, it's already try, trying to connect because it's found it. So that's connecting. It's all happy. Everything is ticks. When I go down to uh, configuration and programming, which is this one here, you'll notice that in this case, I've got the powertrain control module at the top in as built format. Now, sometimes, and I don't know why, sometimes it gives me another option which gives me a nice interface where I can just select cruise control, enable, disable. Sometimes I get it in as built format. Let's do it in as built format because that's the really hard way. So the if you have another option for PCM, that's an easy way. This is hard, let's do it the hard way. So clicking on the PCM as built format, 
So down the bottom, I'm going to click on the play button once I find where my mouse is. Yep, there's my mouse. So I go play. It gives me a warning saying, hey, dude, what you're about to do is really unsafe. Do you want to continue? And a word of what, a word of what it's talking about here. If you've ever gone into your BIOS on your computer and you've set something wrong in the BIOS of your computer, you can turn that computer into a brick. This is the BIOS of your car. So if you put the wrong thing in here, there is a chance you're going to brick your car. So the first thing you want to do is take note of all of the values and down the bottom you'll see there is a value which is save all. I suggest you do save all and um, so that if you do muck something up, you can back it out. Now, I've done the trial and error and worked it out. The cruise control option is option number seven. So, if I get... handy piece of paper here option number seven that's option number seven there so the value is FFFF FF41 F11E now the all of the first digits are the first ten digits so from there to there are data and the last two digits are the checksum so I've put it on a board for you so in line 7, this part here, all of that is data. This last bit here is, a, is the line checksum that makes sure everything there adds up mathematically. Now this one here, 1 is the option that means no, uh, no cruise control. So that 1 there is the one that says you don't have cruise control installed. I've worked it out from various methods that option three is standard cruise control. So what you need to do is change that one to a three, which means you're adding a two. Because you've added two to the data section, you also have to add two to the checksum section. So one E in hexadecimal plus two is two zero. Why? Okay, so, so we've got F1, plus 2 is F3. So that F1 there has become F3, and we've added 2. On the checksum, 1E, the checksum here, plus 2 is equal to 2, 0. So if I want to edit line 7 to enable cruise control, I need to change the ending from F11E to F320. So using my uh, editor here I'm going to go down to line 7 and I'm going to go F320 now you'll notice that every single line of the file has a checksum and if I go to the end of the file you'll see oh, I need to scroll down over here you'll see that the file itself has a checksum, which is line 26. Now, so just to be clear, every line has a line checksum, and the whole file has a file checksum. Now, we've added two to the checksum of line number seven. What we then need to do to keep the file checksum equal uh, the same is we need to subtract two from another line. From looking online, the line that people are editing, or, and the line that the computer does it when you do it through the uh, manual method, is line 25. So, if you look down at line 25, so line 25 by default is FFFF, FFFF, 1A23. Now, we've just said we need to subtract 2 from that. So let's work out how to do that. So in line 25, 1A23 is going to become 1821. Why? Because 1A in hexadecimal minus 2 is 18. Because remember, counting backwards, 1A minus 1 would be 19, minus 2 would be 18. 23 minus 2 is 21. 
So in effect, I need to change 1A23 to 1821. So if I come into line 25 and I change it to 1821. So remember now, I've edited line 7 and line 25. Line 7, I've added to. Line 25, I've removed to. If I now click on right, and I write that to, uh, to the powertrain control module, it says blocks have been programmed successfully. Please cycle the ignition off and then on. I click OK. I'm going to take my key out so that's turning the ignition off. I now put the key on and check it out. Come on in. When I click cruise control on and cruise control off, I now have the cruise control option. So that's how I did it. So, okay, that's it. I'll see you in part two.